The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. I've been lugging around this giant oscilloscope all day going to job sites. I sure wish it was a little lighter, say 50 pounds lighter. Wait a minute, this is the Ben Heck Show. We could build something and I've got just the kit for the job. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspire designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad damn hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. A few years ago at Maker Faire New York, I came across the Gabatronics X Mega X Proto Lab, which is this kit that allows you to put together a very small oscilloscope. It's like, that small. I always thought it'd be cool to make a watch out of it, but I never got around to finding the right battery pack. Recently, we did a battery episode, and that inspired me to finally finish this idea. So in today's episode, we're gonna try to build an oscilloscope watch. To make the enclosure and make it all look nice, we're going to use the Form Labs Form 1 Plus printer that they loaned us over the summer. That should give us nice detail and a very small size, which we might not be able to achieve with a standard 3D printer. The Form 1 Plus is an SLA UV resin printer, which means it uses a UV laser to cure resin one layer at a time to build up an object. You can get really fine detail that you can't necessarily get with the chunky nozzle on the 3D printer. Our goal will be to make a super compact, risk-mounted oscilloscope. And the x Lab also works as a multimeter or multimeter. So that'll be cool too. Let's get started. This is my assembly plan for the watch. I want to take the x Lab and encase it in the center. Using the Formlabs SLA printer, we'll make a high detail case to enclose it. Uh, well, there'll be some plastic buttons here that will actuate the four buttons on the x Lab. Those will nestle into the front of the case, which will have an opening for the screen. That will click down over into the base of the case, which will have watch hinge posts in it. So we can use a high detail of the laser printer for that. And then we will make bands, watch bands, out of leather and use pieces from a cheap watch from the hobby store. And I also want to build the battery into the band so the thickness is spread out this way instead of piling everything up on the watch itself. So to get started, we're gonna make a few more modifications to the X Proto Lab that we have. I laser cut a small spacer and then I'm putting double-sided tape onto it so I can put the spacer under the OLED screen and stick it in place. This way the screen will be level to the PCB. There's four buttons on this oscilloscope and each one has two contacts for the button and then in between those are the contacts for the probes. I've put down little pieces of plastic to insulate them and now I'm gonna use a little bit of glue stick, not hot glue actually, I'm using a glue stick. Strange, huh? And I'm gonna put down these surface mount buttons. The glue will hold them in place and then I will solder them into the contacts. So this will give us a nice low profile switch and still allow us to connect to the probes from the rear. All right, now that they're in place, I can solder them. I have plastic insulation under each button. Once I put the button in place, I'm using solder on the ends of it to connect it to the PCB. They're a little higher than they were originally, but at least now they're compact. I'm going through some iterations here with the watch. I want it to sit on the wrist and be Fairly skinny. Usually when people make watches like this, they end up being really thick. So I want this one to be thin. I think I might put the battery pack in the strap to keep everything thin. I did a few test pieces here of a basic enclosure with the minimal wall thicknesses. Not too bad. Then I evolved it to have uh, buttons. So these aren't the final colors we're gonna use, but uh, I made these small little buttons here and they fit in place and they should actuate the tack switches. It's 
That's what I like about tack switches, you can hear them click and you know they work. I bought this amazing $9 watch at the uh, craft store. I mostly wanted it for the band, but I think there's also a spring-loaded hinge here that I can get. This is an amazing watch. It only There's three dials, but only one of them works. These two are fake. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this spring-loaded hinge out here. Yeah, see, it's a, uh, it's a cylinder with two spring-loaded ends. Quite often, the cheapest and easiest way to get parts like this is just to buy the whole thing. Like one of the cheapest sources for springs is clicky pens. So what I wanna do is you know, have a leather band like this, and then I'm gonna make the watch itself probably in black. It'll have a nice look with the leather. And I have this silver clasp here, or I could use the, the gold would actually look better. Fashion with Ben Heck. <laughs> yeah, run away, right? <laughs> So what I'll do is I'll figure out a way to um, work these into the leather band, which means I'll probably have to do some sewing on the Ben Heck show. And then I also wanna work the battery in. See what a lot of smart watches do, or people who make you know homemade smart watches, is they stack everything up on the wrist and it starts making it really thick. So I'm going to hide the battery in the band to spread out the thickness. Here's the build platform for the Form Labs printer. I'm going to put a piece of scotch tape across it. The reason I'm doing this is because I want it to help the pieces release after they've been printed. You can print them with supports and the supports have kind of like these notches in it that you can use a spatula to pry up. However, um, the supports are very large and it adds a lot of complexity and cleanup to the model. So what I'm hoping this will do is give us a nice whoop, lift surface to release them from the flat surface. I have tried printing things directly on the flat surface and it prints very flat, but they're also very difficult to peel up. So hopefully this trick will work. This is Preform, the software that runs the Formlabs printer. I'm going to add the two watch case pieces for testing that I wanna use. So these are my two pieces, and I want to orient them so I can get a flat surface. So I'm gonna rotate this 180. I kinda wish there were just, you know, 90 degree click buttons on this, there aren't. I'm gonna have them, I don't want them to be too far apart because the closer they are, the faster they print. Even though this is using the laser with a Galvo, it's still, you know, the less it has to move, the better. However, I don't want them to be too close together because some of these elements are kind of thin and I don't want them to bend or collide when I'm trying to peel these off of the build plate. So I'm gonna actually take this one and rotate it 180 degrees in the other direction. Okay, this looks pretty decent. I'm going to print this. Okay, here are the test pieces off of the Formlabs printer. Let's see if my tape idea worked. Probably not supposed to touch this with your bare hands, but I don't care. Ha! see, my tape worked. Form Labs, you are free to take that idea and run with it. Tell everyone, hey, you should do this. So you're supposed to agitate them in this 90% uh, alcohol bath. Okay, so I'm actually gonna pull these out of the alcohol pretty quickly here. This one's got a little flashing on it, but I think it should be okay. I'm just gonna do a quick fit test. It's got a little bit of a slimy feel. Okay, it does lock together, that's good. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. Then I'm gonna actually set it out in the sun because it turns out there's this um, free giant fusion reactor in space that uh, will give us all sorts of UV rays. So see, UV rays are useful. Causes skin cancer, cures 3D prints, you know, yin and yang. So I've got these small white buttons that I 3D printed with FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling. And I might make these out of resin, but just for right now, I'm just testing the fit. Okay, so here's our modded board that we tighten the switches on. And there's little tabs on this. If you can see those three tabs, that just helps interlock it. And they should, the tabs should fit between the buttons. Oh, the back piece is warped, see that? Now, good thing I have another one out in the sun. I think it might be this uh, op amp here. It's sticking out a little bit further than everything else. I could always make this piece a little deeper. Of course, I'm trying to keep this thing as 
thin as possible. Now this is the first rev I printed of the rear of the case that has the um, pinholes for the wristband. So it's basically the same thing as before, but it's got the wristband connects. Let's see if these fit. These are the ones I pulled out of that watch. And one thing about the Formlabs printers, you can get really fine detail like the holes to stick the watch band thing into. All right, I think we're on the right track with that at least. I have my design here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm using it because some of the pieces are gonna be flat like this. Watch band. This here represents where the watch attaches to the plastic case. And I also have a side view that shows its diameter. So what I've done is I've figured out, you know, the distance of leather that wraps around the rod. And then I've added these stitch holes. And I made sure there's a, let me just double check, even number of them. The reason I want an even number is so I can start the stitch underneath and then bring it up. And uh, if there's an odd number of holes, then the, the stitch knot will appear on top. I don't want that. So this could work as the final band. I don't know. I want to just cut it first, but I have enough leather I can make quite a few mistakes, but I won't. There's a pretty good chance this will work. Smells actually worse than I thought it would. But I guess, you know, I should have known better. It is burnt skin. Burnt skin is only gonna smell so good. All right, we have the band half complete. I'm going to attach the three pin connector for the probes. So it's one channel, two channel, and then a common ground. So it's a minimum of three pins. I'm gonna use my solder braid to wick up some of these solder blobs. I want this area to be nice and flat because we don't have hardly any space to fit anything in as it is. So I looked at my drawing. If the um, this little black header sticks 0.07 inches past the edge of the PCB, that will make it flush with the outside of the case. I take my dial caliper and make a mark 0.07 in. As far as the height, I just want to make sure that it is a little bit above the switch so the plastic button has room. Once the header's in place, then I'll take an exact measurement of it and work it into the case design. The contacts for channel one and two are right here, so I'm going to string some wires up over to the header. I'm gonna put ground in the center so you can't plug it in backwards. And then I'll put channels one and two on the sides. This is the three pin header for the probes, channel one, channel two, and ground. I attach the ground to the nearest ground point using a thicker wire to give it some stability along with a little super glue. I then use these thin wires to attach the channel probes themselves. They need to actually go to the left side of the board so I have to do some rerouting. I'm going to assemble the front of the case now. I want to check that the oscilloscope still works after all the hacking that's been done to it. All right, it still boots, good. So these wires are gonna to go to the battery. I made them brown so they look nice with the watch. I'll just have to keep track of which one's which. And then this is where you plug in the leads. We'll do those last. So I 3D printed these little black buttons and they will fit into the slots here, making the buttons fit and also move and click. That's probably the hardest part of the case design. There's not a lot of room in this thing. I'm gonna run these power wires through these holes. You ever wonder why small things like smart watches and just anything small is expensive? It's because it, it's hard to build. It's a lot easier to build something large. Okay, I'm gonna slide this up into place. And there's a notch in the side for the uh, switch and the connector to stick out. Hopefully these still all click. 
Now I was making this thing as small as I possibly could. A lot of uh, smart watches that I see people make are kind of thick and I wanted to go in a different direction, which would be thin. I'm going to double check that it still works and then I'm actually going to glue this together. It will be sealed for all time in a tomb of rock. Okay, all the buttons work. Time to take the plunge. The power of the iPhone in the palm of my hand. This is the um, lithium ion battery pack that I wanna use with the watch. It's one of the smallest ones we have laying around. There is a uh, protection circuit on it right here and it was folded onto the battery before so I'm just thinking the best way to attach it because I want to actually put the plug on the battery so when you want to charge it, you can unplug the watch from the battery and charge the battery separately. Also got to be careful because as we mentioned in our battery episode, these batteries are powerful, therefore you want to be extra careful with them. And that's another thing, like whenever you solder a LiPo, it's live, you know, it's the circuit's always live so you have to make damn sure you don't short circuit anything. It's like playing that old operation game. You don't want to hit the side of the walls. Cause just like that game, you gotta get a, get a good shock. There we go. Always makes me feel like I'm diffusing a bomb. Bomb. I want to do some tests with this leather here before I attach the battery. So I'm just gonna very cheapy capture the prong here. My plan is to quote unquote hide the battery in the top leather strap by making it part of the strap. That spreads out the thickness. I just want to see how it feels. I used to wear a watch all the time, but now I don't. Great story, huh? So what I want to do is have the battery someplace here, and the top of this strap will be a little wider, and I want to basically hide the battery with decoration. And I actually remove the wire from the battery, and I fold it over this header into it onto the uh, protection circuit, then I surrounded it with new captain tape to make sure it's insulated. So I think I can have this pretty high up like this. I'll just temp this in with a little bit of hot glue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, actually put some headers in. I'm actually gonna put it in backwards because the header on the battery is a little short. So I'm gonna actually move the plastic down so the distance is fairly even like that. And that will reduce the depth on either side. And I'm doing this first so I can see how it's going to, you know, net out and then I can figure out the best way to uh, creatively hide it using leather and design. I want to hide the battery as much as possible, so I'm printing a black carbon fiber cap to go over it. The color black will make it look smaller in the design. I then put the battery inside of the leather, not on top of the leather, and sew it in place. Finally, I put on the cap to complete the look. It looks pretty thin. I'm attaching the probes now. We're using some colored wire. The center wire is ground. The outer wires are the two channels. That way you can't plug it in really incorrectly. There we go. So my idea is this will be on your wrist and then the probes will go on your fingers and then the black will be an alligator clip, so you can clip it on the ground. Felix went to the hardware store and got these nails. I think these would make great probes. So you think, okay, if it's on your fingertips, what's the maximum distance it might go? And then go a little further. And a little further than that. <laughs> I don't know that the solder is gonna stick to this nail. I just gotta have faith. I'm gonna guess there's a 65% chance it will work. It worked, I actually meant 100. Also, you know, you could you know, use this for self-defense if you needed to. <laughs> yeah, when do we stop being nice when I tell you? So this is some double-sided Velcro tape that Felix had. It sticks to itself, mind blown. I'm gonna 3D print some little elongated caps for this and then we'll be ready to test. So a big reason I made this into a watch was I thought it would be handy to have something, you know, that doesn't get in your way. I'm gonna switch it on. Okay, this is my friend's Spider-Man game that he left here while he was moving. 
I'm gonna clamp this onto ground. There we go. And now I can just probe wherever I want. Hope I don't fry my friend's game. He'd be like probably upset. And the thing that's nice about having two probes is um, if you want to look at a, how a si uh, signal follows another signal, you can look at one and then the next and then compare them on the scope watch. So we're using our probes, we can see we go one, two, one, two. So these are in sequence. So yeah, that's why it's useful to have two channels, not just one. And the fact that you can go to a meter is pretty cool too. So I can get voltages while I'm here. Oh, let's look at this regulator. Oh yeah, that's your 3.3 .3 volt regulator that's providing power for integrated circuits. All right, well, there you have it. The oscilloscope watch works pretty good and it's quite comfortable to wear. This, not so much. I better not scratch my face. The challenge for this episode was to use a Gavitronics X Proto Lab to assemble an oscilloscope watch. We made some modifications to the X Proto Lab, then designed a custom enclosure for it that we printed using the Form Labs SLA printer. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We made it as small as it really could be, and we used the watch band to hide a lot of the bulk of the battery, which is usually what makes watches like this way too thick. As for what I do differently, it would have been cool to make the entire enclosure out of carbon fiber PLA. It has a very cool look, but I haven't dialed in that profile quite yet for the material. What would you have done differently for this project? Have you ever made a custom watch before? Let us know in the Element 14 community, where you can also keep track of our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Presenting the Ben Heck Show Oscilloscope Watch. Built with the finest laser cut resin, rich Corinthian leather, carbon fiber plating, and 0 .00000 grams of pure gold. It's not just a watch, it's an accessory for your soul. Finally, you can wear something on your wrist that lets other people know just how much disposable income you truly have. The oscilloscope watch does not tell time, but that is okay, because time will stand still when you are in its presence. Order your oscilloscope watch now for the low, low price of $70 billion. Payment plans are also available. The oscilloscope watch from the Ben Heck Collection. You don't wear it. It wears you. I thought elves were supposed to be wise. No, we just live a long time. Doesn't mean we learn anything. So the colors I'm thinking are black watch with leather and a faux gold latch and it will look really smashing for the fall collection. Mm -hmm. Look, I have it and you don't. Na 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 boo boo. <laughs> Very scientific part removal tool. See, if they made that movie now, he would have lines like, Prepare for global cooling. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.